Welcome to video message three, entitled In the Event. Uh, it is really important to watch this video in its entirety, so please spare me a few minutes of your time. This video is to prepare everyone should the center have a confirmed case of COVID. I want to give you all the steps and protocols first, so we, that, we, that way we are all on the same page. As you listen to this, jot down any questions you may have as during the Zoom orientation next month, I will allocate time to jump on with each class to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, we need to remember that there is no perfect method or set of protocols that can 100% guarantee that we will not see a case. I know that this is an unnerving situation to speak about, but we all need to be prepared together. Should we get a case? I know that the first response will be to panic, and I'm human, I probably will panic too. But we will let that panic sink in run its course quickly, and then dig our heels into the ground to make sure we eliminate it as best as we can from the center. There are a few scenarios that can play out, um, and I'd like to review all of them with you so everyone knows when it happens, what to do. So let's get started. Scenario one, close contact with a positive case. This means that a family member of an, of an attending student tests positive. Uh, what you should do first, next, and so forth. First, you must notify us immediately, and that student will quarantine at home for two weeks. So, for example, if there's a child that's attending our center and their family member tests positive for COVID, that child has to quarantine immediately first. Um, they have to please get tested and share the results with us. Uh, the results of that child. We will notify the families within the students of that class and we will share the results as soon as they are given to us. The class will however remain open until we get the test results of the student. This is based on the Department of Health and Department of Health and Mental Hygiene's protocols which states that if a student is in close contact with an individual that tests positive for COVID, only that student needs to quarantine. If that child tests positive, then we will close that specific class, all students and the teachers in that room, for two weeks, and everyone will need to be tested and provide us with the results. When the two weeks are all over, all students and teachers must give us a negative test result to return. So in summary of the first scenario, if, for example, a child is in contact with somebody that has COVID, that child will quarantine first, provide us with the test results, and then based on the test results, will dictate what we will do with the class. So the class will remain open until the test results are in. If the test results state that the child does indeed have COVID, then we will automatically shut down the entire class. Scenario two, a direct positive case. That means a student or a teacher directly in that class tests positive for COVID. Notify management immediately. Um, the entire class will be quarantined for two weeks. Um, families in the, cl the class are informed as well as all other classrooms in the building. That class will quarantine for two weeks and only return after those two weeks with a negative result. The building will be completely sanitized on top of the daily cleaning it goes through each night. So if we get a positive case directly from a child or teacher in the class, the class will be closed immediately. An email will be sent home to that class and to the entire building, so everyone will know that there is a, a case of COVID. Um, and then we will take the steps in terms of making sure that our buildings are clean, the classroom uh, gets uh, cleans more than once, and then everybody can return once they have a negative COVID test after two weeks. Let's say they're siblings. If there's a sibling in a different class and one of them is in a class that has a positive case. If a class closes due to a COVID case and there is a sibling of a child from that closed classroom that's attending in another room, only the sibling needs to quarantine, not the whole sibling's entire class. We will then ask that sibling to get uh, COVID tested and then so we can determine if that class also needs to close. So if the test comes back positive of the, of the sibling, then that the second class will close as well. If the child tests negative, then we can keep that class open and the other only the, the original class remains closed for the two weeks. And again, if it's 
the positive test comes back, we will close the classrooms, we will sanitize, we will sanitize more than once, and everybody needs to come back then with a negative COVID test. What will constitute, constitute for a full sensor closure? If there are if multiple cases arise from different classrooms, then the entire center will close for two weeks and we will reopen when all staff and students test negative after two weeks for COVID. So if, if there's, let's say, in classroom 2A and then we have a, a case in 4A, two different cases in two different classrooms, that's multiple classrooms, um, and we see that that is the trend that we're having multiple cases, we will shut down the whole building. We will need to, that's protocol from the Department of Health to shut it down for a full two weeks. And then everybody must get tested after the two weeks for COVID and return with a negative COVID test. The current protocols that we have in place, the purpose of our current protocols. So prohibiting the intermingling of, intermingling of classrooms and staff, maintaining social distancing. So the reason why you can't go on the playground, the reason why we're only letting one kid in, one child in um, at a time in the building and releasing one child at a time in the evening is that in the event we do have a case, it is contained to that one class. So it doesn't spread around. So if we do have a class, we when we close that one class, the hope is, the thinking is that if it's just there, then it won't spread if we're not mixing kids, if they're not really pa using the, the hallways as common areas and having you know, them walk through and walk past each other at this point. So if you see that you know, you're waiting a little extra online um, during, pick, during the pickup, it's because we're only letting one child down the hallway and the, the, the parent must be in the vestibule to pick them up and then they can exit. We will no longer be allowing uh, the children to exit if their parents are waiting outside. You must be in the vestibule and one parent, one child at a time will be released from the center. Um, we are doing frequent cleanings throughout the day and in the evening. If I can tell you how many times the teachers are cleaning and how many cleaning products we're going through in a week, um, it's a lot, but that's okay because we're trying to clean as much as we possibly can to help minimize the spread of germs in the classrooms and in the evening our, our uh, full sanitation process of the entire building. Our daily temperature checks and questions are, I know a lot of you say no, no, no right away to the questions, but it's really important that we ask them and it's really important that everybody remains honest when they're answering them. This is to keep track and monitor everyone's health. If we see any elevated temperatures going on, if we see a lot of kids coming in with runny noses that are not clear, things like that. That's how we monitor um, the, the health, the general health of the entire center. So if you must quarantine for two weeks, um, I know a lot of you will probably ask, well, what's the credit for, for this and what will the remote learning look like? So if you must quarantine for two weeks, what type of credit will be applied? On the following month's invoice, you will see a credit of $300. So management will absorb one week and we're asking families to absorb another. Because yes, we are still paying the teachers for those two weeks, they will still be working. So we're trying to be fair to everybody all around. And the fairest way is for us to absorb one week and for the parents to absorb another. The teachers will convert to remote learning for the duration of the quarantine. There will be live inter interactive instructions for the threes, fours, and kindergarten classrooms. That means we'll actually have daily lessons um, through Zoom or whatever platform we deem fit. Uh, for those age groups, if for the two-year-olds, we will have a live stream, uh, but it'll look a lot different than the, than the older children because you know they are very young and it's difficult for them to sit still to, to watch a screen. And all assignments will be emailed uh, emailed to you ahead of time um, within those two weeks so everybody can continue with the learning. It's important that uh, we remain uh, with the academics as well. I want to reiterate that this video is not meant to cause panic, but it's to help us all prepare and be ready to handle a situation like this. Uh, we are in a time where there are too many uncontrollable, uncontrollable variables. Uh, but we can control how we respond. So it's important that we work together on this and be as vigilant as we possibly can. Um, again, we can touch up on this during the parent orientation if you have any questions. Uh, again, I'm gonna say this again, this video was not meant to make anyone panic, but we need to work together and everybody needs to know what to do uh, first, second, next, what it's gonna look like, what the structure is going to look like that we'll be emailing you. 
uh, and communicating with you through emails about this. So it's important that we all remain on the same page. And if you have any questions, please note them down so we can talk about it during the parent orientation very quickly. And I hope everyone continues to stay safe and thank you for watching.